my experience so far has been um, if you're working in a small booth, this is a small booth, four feet by four feet. This is a small booth. Yeah. Is, is, is better to have what I call a live wall and a dead wall. Mm-hmm. The dead wall is where all the absorbency is. Okay. Because this, this is the sensitive side of the microphone, right? And so any, anything that's coming this direction, if it, this, is the, this is the less sensitive side of the mic, right? So any sound right. that's coming this way, the mic isn't going to hear it that well. And that, everything on that side of the mic is sound I don't want. Mm-hmm. Right? Everything on the wrong side of the mic is sound I don't want getting in here. Yeah. So that sound is unwanted sound. And if it bounces off here and gets in, game over, right? right. Your, your sound is, is bad. So I want everything that's, that's coming off this wall to die right. when it's this wall. But the live wall, there is a little sound that comes back. The microphone can hear it a little tiny bit. So there's a little, a little bit of vibrancy, a little bit of life that's coming back into the microphone off my live wall, my bright wall. So this is a, this side of my, uh, is a window and there's a window here in the door. So I get a little bit of reflection, a little bit. And that first reflection is okay. But then if it, if it starts bouncing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, that's when you get that reverb and that nasty echo and and all that stuff. So I'm okay with that, that first gentle reflection that comes back, but it better not come off this wall and back into the microphone. Then I've got it twice. Yeah. And then it's bad. So that's when I talked before about having it be too dead, I could have put four inches all the way around and it would sound really dead and like there'd be no vibrancy at all. It would sound like an anechoic chamber. It would sound lifeless. Right. So by, by tempering how much life and how much absorption I have, that works. And what I, the, the thing I've discovered is, is if you have parallel surfaces, so mm-hmm. I've, got a, I've got a wall over here and a wall over here, they're parallel, sound will bounce back and forth, back and forth. So if you, if you, if you put a lot of treatment on one wall and leave the other wall with a lot less treatment, that is a good compromise. Oh, okay. No echoes. No echoes. Uh, no, it will, there'll be no standing wave. And that's been a, it's been a, a good trick that I've learned so far. So I do that between the ceiling and the floor, between these two walls, and between these two walls. That's been yeah. working so far. Yeah, that's really interesting because I, I, at least for me, my um, thinking at first would have been uh, just make it every, cover as much of every single surface as you can. The closer to 100%. Right foam right. on every single inch would it is, is better so that's interesting right. that you're saying a little bit of right. reflection and opposing walls and surfaces is a good thing yeah I, I had initially once once i built this and it sounded like a bathtub i went well i'm just gonna i'm just gonna fill every possible surface i was like i bought this one with this window but i'm gonna cover it up uh and it turns out that luckily i didn't need to do that yeah and it, i discovered it once i once i had the microphone here in this corner and I started talking this way and it sounded very lifeless. I went, oh, okay. If I'm facing that way with the live wall behind me, yeah. um, that doesn't sound so good because I never get that first echo, that first reflection here. Uh, and so it was really, I really thought I was gonna be treating every surface with, uh, with it and make it even smaller in here. But luckily I, d- I didn't have to. And it was just purely trial and error, purely trial yeah. and error. 